I'm trying to plot 11 million data points on my laptop. It looks like a big blob, and I can't extract any meaningful information from it. What should I do? Let me just Google it. Big Data Visualization Python. OK, looks like I should use Data Shader. Let me give it a try. Wow. Oh my god, it works like magic. It is so fast, and the plot is interactive. Let me show you what Data Shader is and how Data Shader works. Data Shader was developed by my Anaconda colleagues, Philip Rudiger, John Luke Stevens, and Jim Benner. It is one of the seven libraries in the Holovis ecosystem. If you'd like to learn more about Holovis, check out my previous video on how and why I love Holovis. So why is big data visualization so hard? There are two main obstacles to visualize big data. First is speed. If you were to plot big data using your regular Python plotting libraries, it could be extremely slow and your Jupyter kernel could crash. Second is image quality. Even if it doesn't crash and you're willing to wait, most plotting libraries will simply keep drawing each new data point as a circle or some other shape on top of each other, which will result in overplotting. Even adding alpha transparency for overplotting points won't always help in the situation. Data Shader provides elegant and seemingly magical solutions to those two obstacles. Next, I will show you an example and peek into the magic involved. First, let's import needed packages in your Conda environment. I guess before that, if you haven't installed Anaconda or Miniconda already, please first install those. Then you can create a new Conda environment, activate this environment, and then install the packages we need. Now, we can open up a Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Lab and import the packages we need. Next, let's read in some data from Parquet files using the pandas read Parquet function. Here we'll load two columns representing taxi drop-off locations for the very largest files, you'll want to use a distributed processing library like Dask with Data Shader. But here, we only have a Parquet file with only 11 million records, which Data Shader can easily handle on a laptop using Pandas without any special computing resources. Then we can plot our data using Data Shader. Yanni took four lines of code where we use the Data Shade function to Data Shade all the points. Alternatively, instead of using the data sheet function, we can use hvplot with rasterize equals true to apply rasterization using data shader. I highly recommend using hvplot. It is super easy. How does data shader work exactly? Data shader turns your data into a plot using a five-step pipeline, projection, aggregation, transformation, color mapping, and embedding. I'm going to break down my example into those small steps so that you can see exactly what data shader is doing under the hood. Let's first install the underlying data shader functions so that we can run through the individual steps. The first step is projection. We define a 2D canvas with width and height for the data to be project onto. The canvas defines how many pixels we would like to see in the final image. But for speed, each point is actually projected during the aggregation step next. The second step is aggregation. After we define the projected canvas, we project each point into the two-dimensional output grid and aggregate the results per pixel. Data Shader supports many options for such aggregation, but in this example, we simply count how many data points are projected into each pixel by iterating through the data points and incrementing the pixels where the point lands. The result in this case is a two-dimensional histogram counting drop-offs per pixel. The third step is transformation. Once the data is in this grid, we can do any kinds of transformations we like, such as selecting on a certain range of counts, masking the data based on the results of other data sets or values, and others. Here, the drop-off data ranges from zero in some pixels and tens of thousands in others, and if we were to plot the grid directly, we would only see a few hotspots. To make all the different levels visible, as in the image we showed you earlier, the data is transformed using the image processing technique histogram equalization to reveal the distribution of the counts rather than their absolute values. Histogram equalization is actually folded into the color mapping steps, but we can do explicit transformations at this stage if we want, such as squaring the counts. The fourth step is color mapping. We can 
render the bend grid data into the corresponding pixels of an image. Each bin value is mapped into one of the 256 colors defined in a color map. For example, here it uses histogram equalization. In this example, we are using the fire color map from the color set, which starts at black for the lowest values and goes up to red for higher values and then yellow for even higher values and finally white for the highest accounts per pixel, which is tens of thousands in this case. We set the backgrounds to black to better visualize this data. The final step is embedding. As you can see, data shader only renders the data, not any pixels, color bars, or similar features you would expect in a full plot. To get those features that help you interpret the data, we can embed this image generated by data shader into a plot. The easiest way is to use Holoviews, which is a high-level plotting API that provides the flexibility to use either Matplotlib, Bokeh, or Plotly as a backend. Here is an example of using Holoviews to define a points object and then data shading all the points. Here we demonstrate an alternative method rasterize instead of data shade so that Bokeh is in charge of the transformation and color mapping steps and allows hover and color bars to work. You can also use rasterize with hvplot just like we showed in, in the example earlier. Why is data shader crazy fast? First, we need to talk about the original data format. Data shader is so fast that reading in data is usually the slowest step, particularly if your original data is a bunch of JSON files or CSV files. The parquet data format is usually a good choice for the columnar data, like the drop-off points we have here, because it's compact, quick to loading, efficiently reads in only the columns and ranges you need, and supports distributed and out-of-core operation when appropriate. Second, with the right input file formatting, we can investigate the next most expensive task, which is the combined projection plus aggregation step. The step requires calculating values for each of the millions of data points, while all the subsequent calculations using the final fixed size grid and are thus much faster. So what does data shader do to make this step fast? First, Data shaders aggregation calculations are written in Python, but then just in time compiled into the wicked fast machine code using Numba. Second, data shader plus Numba also supports CUDA, CUDF data frames as a dropping replacement for a pandas data frame that runs even faster if you have a GPU. Third, data shader can also parallelize its pipelines so that it can make use of all the computing cores you have available scaling to even larger data sets and even faster results. Because data shader is so fast, we can actually visualize big data interactively, dynamically rejoin whenever we zoom or pan. Here is an example where you can view the NYC taxi data interactively in a panel dashboard. My favorite example on ship traffic illustrates that even though all you see is a pixelated image that data shader renders, you can still inspect individual data points and understand what they're saying. The other examples at pyovis.org show data shader for much larger files, up to billions of points on an ordinary laptop. If you'd like to learn more about data shader, I highly recommend checking out the many great examples at datashader.org and our examples using data shader in a panel app in awesomepanel.org. Thank you. Hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>